Okay, exploring a bit now would make the timer for the next part a little bit less restricting. I didn't realize we had a timer on the next part. Well, yeah, we'll do that. I would like to get to the kingdom management tonight, but... Well, I'd say I'm in no rush, but it's really just... I got a lot of time. Wasn't that the guy that visited you in the nightmare? Maybe? It might have been, actually. Oh, you're supposed to get a nightmare while resting that would have sent you here. That happened during the bad timeline, back when I had everything on uh, super hard difficulty. I hated that nightmare, because uh, it effectively... Uh, it was relentless. It just kept happening. Well, let's go back to Oleg's. We're just going to evade the enemies. I could fight them, but we're all exhausted. That might actually be a bad idea. But I figure we might be able to get around them. At least for now. We might be able to get back and fight them. But I just want to go back to the trading post here. Yeah, the timeline we don't speak of. Pretty much, yeah. I still have the footage for that. But I don't think I'm going to use it. Because I was like... I don't get mad at games easily. And I rarely rage quit them. I get a little frustrated and I'll definitely uh, bitch and moan about uh, about certain things. But it's rare that I get like moderately mad at anything. And I'm so glad that I was like, no, I, I need to keep playing this game. I love this game too much to, to just throw it away like this. Because yeah, I was frustrated. It was awful. Oh, hello. So, oh. Valerie catches up to you near the trading post and touches you on the shoulder. Kelgrit's the Mad, can I talk to you? Now that the Stag Lord's defeated, you rightfully own the Stolen Lands. Demandi Aldori will endorse you and grant you the Baron's title. The girl looks at you with interest and a little apprehension. What will you do when you sit on the throne, Kelgrit's the Mad? Please don't say that you haven't thought about it at all. Whatever happens, I hope you're beside me. I appreciate- Oh, that's hitting on her. Okay. There's enough work to do in the Stolen Lands. Running off bandits, founding a state, protecting the common people. Valerie nods, please. To be honest, I didn't expect any other answer from you. You're a noble person, Kelgritz. I'm glad I can serve the good of your state. This request sounds we really weird with your name. Yeah, I really wish they actually, um... I I really wish games would add, like, title fields. Uh, you know, uh, prefixes and suffixes, sort of. You know, prenames, so postnames. Uh, so that you could put them in, and so characters would sometimes call you by Kelgritz the Mad, if they knew your reputation. But if they don't know you, they call you Gnome, they call you Kelgritz, they call you Sorcerer, and whatnot. That would... Oh, man, that would be amazing for... Uh, that would be amazing for for uh, role-playing purposes, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so we want to do price and descending order, and we want to get rid of some crap. Let's see. Is this as good as Divinity 2? Pillars. I'm on the fence, because the reviews are everywhere. It's getting a lot better, which I think is part of the reason why the reviews are, are kind of all over the place. I myself gave this game kind of a, uh, a mediocre review to begin with, because, yeah, I, I didn't actually like it that much when I first played it. Just because it was, it had some wild balance problems. Now they've fixed a lot of them, and I'm actually enjoying myself quite a lot. Uh, so if you want to play a good CRPG, you're not going to go wrong with this game, but you will need to fiddle with the diffi difficulty a lot. Now, is there a difference between these two? Yeah, oh, no? There's no difference between these two bows. Uh, but like... You know, if, if you like legitimately hard fights across the board, this actually, you know, might might be uh, good from the get-go. Or if you kind of like more of a, a easy sit back and just kind of adventure, uh, you can get that too. And yeah, the devs are also very active about updating it. I absolutely hate, uh, what's a, well, easy example is one of my most hated games ever, Necropolis. I loved Necropolis, and I hate Necropolis, because it was it was a game that could have been good had they given it proper post-game support, and instead they didn't bother. And the game sucks. Let's see, can I give him the Ring of Protection? Nope, he already has one. What about her? 
Can I can I drag these party members around? I really wish I could actually sort them here. She doesn't have one. She is a tough gal. Oof. So that's built belt of mighty constitution. She's got a belt of giant strength. Yeah, mm. Let's give him the constitution. Make the dwarf even tougher. Let's see. Try not to sell the stag lord's equipment. It's good. I don't sell magical stuff until I've taken a look at it. So. Extra insight bonus to attack rolls against flat-footed and flanked targets. No. Well, do we give it to Amiri? It makes Amiri look stupid, though. I don't know about that helmet. It's good. I just gotta figure out who to give it to. I guess we'll give it to Valerie. I'm not a very big fan of Valerie's, like, in-game haircut. Those are brazers of archery. I appreciate the fact that the Stag Lord, uh, by the way, was a... was an archer. Instead of being some kind of barbarian tank-like person. Is Valerie carrying a door like Greg? Yes, she is. Ask because I'm I've put off Divinity and finished pillars. I'm torn between Pathfinder and Divinity 2. Ooh, that's a tougher one. Cause Divinity 2 has a oh, terrible plot, but the best gameplay, in my opinion. I really was not a big fan of of the the plot in um in Divinity Original Sin 2. It was confusing and murky. And, like, it had a lot of potential, but I think it just never really came into its own. Like, they had great ideas, but, like, half the time I was just like, this is... Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I, I found myself a little bit baffled by, by some of the plot points that happened. Uh, so, it, I guess it really depends on what you value in a game. Because I would still say that this is the superior product as far as, um... As far as writing goes. Okay, who has the best mobility? She's got eight, she's got nine, so Lindsay. And we've got a keen sickle, which I thought keen. Wait, isn't keen supposed to increase the uh, the crit? Uh, I mean, it's, it's not very good. I'm probably gonna sell it, but I thought keen increased the uh, the window for crits. But I will say Divinity's combat system is is truly peerless. And it's entirely voice acted, which was really, really good. But like I the environmental stuff was so satisfying in Divinity Original Sin. And I've always been a little bit disappointed. Oh, right. Her accuracy sucks because she's exhausted. I was wondering about that. Uh Winter Veil. Bonus to all savings throws in a cold resistance of 10. Uh, let's see, do the, all of these? I guess I'll give it to her, she's the most hurtable. There we go. Okay, it doesn't update the tooltip, but it works in the combat log. Neat. Still kind of useless here though, because Keen Sickle is not going to be that useful for any of my party members. Because Sickle's like... A keen sword would be great. A keen great axe would be great. Uh, not so, not so sold on on a keen simple weapon. Unless I had a character that could use it. But even if I had a character that could use it, I don't, I don't know. Like I'd rather use the kukri plus one, because that's a keen kukri would be lovely. Okay, we also have hide armor plus two, which is six armor class. Versus five, okay. And we also have the Woodland Aegis. Now, bards don't have to worry about spell failure, right? I don't actually know how bards work with uh, spell failure and stuff. Because their their spells aren't divine, but they're kind. There are. Let's see, is the chain shirt light armor? Yeah, it is. Chain shirts are light armor. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. I don't think I want to put this on anybody else. A keen scythe could be fun. And could do a lot of damage. Usually I go for a keen... Um, uh, let's see. It's not a kukri. There's a couple... There's a couple of really good ones. Okay. They do unless in light armor. Okay. So as long as she's wearing... If she's wearing this, it should be fine. Wood, Woodland a Aegis is perfectly fine. Admittedly, it's actually not any better than the uh, the chain shirt now that I'm looking at it. But it doesn't have the check penalty, so I'll go with that. Yeah, give the bard the chain shirt plus one then. Now I'm going to give her the Woodland's Aegis, because uh, zero armor check penalty means we can actually use... Uh, we can use her like dodge or mobility and athletics skills. Yeah, Keen Scimitars are pretty effective. King Kukris can be kind of good. Uh, Felshions. I actually really like uh, Keen Bastard Swords and stuff because their high base damage is real satisfying. There's a couple other like more edge casey weapons uh, that I forget about easily, but there's there's some that have like a times three multiplier and a nineteen times uh, nineteen to twenty slash times two, and like those are pretty good. I might hold on to the glaive. I'll think about that one. I don't think we need the... No, we kind of need the one to find traps. I'm just not using it. Let's see. Octavia is a wizard. Uh, casting armor in a, armor is a problem. Not if you have the feet for it. Let's see. Agile rapier. I'll hold on to that one. I'll throw that. I'll throw that in the bin. I, I gave her the feet so that she'd... Uh, she ignores up to the first 10% of casting failure. I figured it was a reasonable idea. Uh, let's get rid of Vanish. I don't think I'm going to use that. Probably same thing with Piercing Scream. Let's see. We also have a bunch of books, but I'm probably just going to store those. Offer. We've already done that. All right. So I have a lot of money. What does he have? A lesser Empower Metamagic Rod. Three spells they cast per day empowered up to level three. So increase numbers by half. That would be useful. That's actually really good. There's also the flaming light crossbow, which is pretty good. We've got stat stuff, but not that helpful. Reach, extend. Extend is interesting. Reach is also interesting, but that's range. I don't remember what the size one is. Uh, let's see. We don't have any maces. We do have a heavy flail, but that's a two-handed weapon. And I don't want... If it was a regular flail or, like, a heavy mace, I'd like it. Right. It's the Falcata. I want a keen Falcata. I, I will spec somebody into a Falcata if I can. Because they are dangerous. 19 to 20 time, uh, and slash times 3 on crits is is a very scary combo. Yeah, do we save our do we save our money or do I go for the lesser empowered uh meta magic rod? I'm also real tempted to pick up the flaming light crossbow just to give to uh to Lindsay cuz that would that would make her hurt a lot. It would cost me... Actually, I don't have enough money for both. Actually, Agile is useless, so we can get rid of that. Honestly, we're kicking ass enough as it is. We'll just save our money for now. I imagine this game doesn't let you craft items. Some do, most don't. I know Neverwinter Nights had a magic crafting system, but it was convoluted and weird feeling, and I didn't like it so much. It'd be nice if you could actually just uh, take money and a magic weapon and just get it enchanted. But no, D&D generally doesn't like you uh, crafting new weapons. Which sucks a little bit, because it would be kind of nice to customize a little bit more. Okay. So what do we do next? We've... 
We've rested. We've got that out of the way. We could talk to some characters if we wanted to. That might not be a bad idea. I don't like talking to characters because it's kind of slow. Kareem pulls at his beard, muttering something that could either be prayers or curses. Upon noticing you, he winces. Eh, what's that? Oh, it's you. Kelgert's the mad. Uh, I can't do a Scottish accent. I could kind of try, but it'll be tough. Did I startled you? startled you? I'm sorry. Oh no, that doesn't matter. I was just contemplating the futility of existence and the worthlessness of the universe. The ways of Grodus are great. My humble mortal cannot fully grasp them. But I do what I can. Okay. Uh, bye. Yeah, I don't really want to learn about characters' pasts. If they give me quests, I'm down for it. But I'm not too interested in, like, talking too much. Now, who do we have to talk to? Okay, we can talk to Jaw, the cleric of Rastal, at the very least. How may I serve you? Ah. Uh, I found the temple of the elk and killed the beasts there. Erastil be praised, you finally returned, my good friend. Christian told me how you helped him at the temple of the elk. Thank you for heeding my request. My heart is calm and filled with confidence that I've followed the will of my god. I would like to reward your bravery. I possess no treasure, but please take this as a token of appreciation. Do you understand the true meaning of your visions now? I trust in their truth. These visions, they were the voice of a Rostil himself. Quiet but clear. Before all this happened, I believed a Rostil had turned his back to me. But now, I see clearly. He has shown me divine mercy, for he has led me to you and invited me to aid in a fellow priest's deliverance. Lady Serenray and a Rostil walk the paths of the gods hand in hand, and so must their servants as well. Christian is undoubtedly still very young, and youth is a time of naivete and confusion. But I see kindness and strength of spirit in him, traits indispensable to a priest. I sense that all that's transpired thus far is only the beginning, and the future promises great things for Christian and for you, Baroness. This is why Arastil led me to the Temple of the Elk. Day and night I pray for you and for my young friend. May the stag god lead you down the true path. That's enough for now. As you wish. Bye. Okay, so that's probably enough talking to people. Let's see. Chapter 3 now, there's not a single thing in shops that you need to buy. Alright, well that makes it easy enough. Uh, is there anything you actually need to... Okay, so money gets spent on kingdom building. Well, I guess we're gonna hoard it for that then. So what do we do next? Uh, oh, right. Let's actually... Let's dump some things. Uh, let's see. Wait. In descending order. So I've got a bunch of these. Can I... Can I split? It won't let me. That's dumb. So we're gonna leave the glaive behind. All the books. What's that? Some rope? Question mark. You know, I'm going to hold on to that rope. Who knows? It might actually have a use. Or it might have no use. What is this? Diamond dust. Huh. Written orders. Don't think we need that. We also have the toy knight. Well, these have, like, no weight to them. So I can just kind of hold on to them forever. I almost kind of wish they weren't shown at all in loot and they were just added to a journal. Yeah, we have a stupid amount of cooking ingredients and potions. Which I'm not actually sure if I will ever use. I probably should, but I'm probably just going to hoard, hoard them forever, and that'll just be the name, uh, the end of it. Technically speaking, there's two bags of holding that you have to buy in Act 2, otherwise they disappear forever, but that's optional. Yeah, that is the one thing I will always automatically buy. Bags of holding are amazing. Okay, there we are. Yeah, you, you absolutely... In D&D, you want to hoard bags of holding like nobody's business. If you've got a DM that doesn't care so much, 
you know, maybe you don't have to worry about it. But I've had DMs that cared about carrying weight, and it was annoying. Because I was, I was, uh... They had me, like, go out of my way to grab, um... Oh, what was it? They had me go out of my way to get a cart and donkey just so I could carry back all the loot. And we spent, like, almost an entire session just straight up uh, trying to figure out... Hello. Uh, we spent almost an entire session trying to figure out the logistics of transporting our, our dungeon loot from one to another. If you change the meal you cook, you get a different bonus. Yes, I should probably pay attention more to that. I was... Oh, right, we've picked up some recipes. I forgot about that. Let's actually, let's, let's learn some re recipes right now. Well, I thought I had a recipe to learn. I guess I don't. Either that, oh, wait, there it is. Sweet pancakes. Anyway, who's Bandit Illusionist? A Amiri. See. Can you make an epic pose? I need inspiration. Well, pfft. that bandit had ideas. I don't... I get the feeling this random encounter was scaled for a lower level party. Let's see. I once had a, uh, I once had a DM, and this is actually a really cool, uh, this is actually a really cool, uh, plot hook. But it was frustrating at the time, so I had a DM that gave me a bag of holding. But it wasn't actually a bag of holding, it was a portal to, I think it was the elemental plane of Earth. I, I used this in, um, I, I used this in the Grave of Man campaign that nobody noticed. But it was a portal to the elemental plane of Earth into, effectively, a storeroom. And every item I throw in, they took and then sold. Uh, and I, I figured it out because they'd sold, like, something important of mine or whatever. And so what we ended up doing was crawling into the bag and then taking all our stuff back. Or whatever we could, plus some extras. Uh, but it was frustrating at the time because they apparently had sold something that I desperately needed. I think it was like a cloak of the manta ray and my character drowned. Oh well. Anyway. We walked across the heath for a long time, yet no sight sprang up before our eyes. By turns we discovered a verdant lowland, with several nearabout springs streaming down behind another hillside. And then in the distance, in the center of the lowland among the bush, there stood a single dry tree. A true giant. Its magnificent outline resembled an animal's paw, clawing at the sky. But what was truly remarkable, the flat landscape was dotted by mysterious dark humps. They were piled about the height of a man, and scattered around in abundance. We had determined that we could explore the lowland. The further we trekked, the softer the land became. Step by step, the heath gave way to moss, low-lying, low-growing shrubs and ferns, then sloshy puddles of stinky swamp water. The muddy ground sucked at our feet, and soon our party was jumping from hassock to hassock. Finally, we reached the first group of mysterious humps, and learned there were no more he mere hills, but dugout dwellings. We moved with great care towards the center of the lowland, and there the real swamp began. On the way towards the mysterious giant tree, we saw the foggy outline of another hut, this one much bigger and surrounded by small clay statues. Standing one behind the other we tie, tie, and tied together with a rope, we continued our journey. We walked slowly, carefully, choosing our way, keeping to drier ground as much as possible. But the further we went, the more difficult it became, and soon we were wading waist-deep through the cattails. Frogs croaked loudly as we peered anxiously into the cloudy water. Struggling to make out what shadows flitted among the bottom, or along the bottom. We often stumbled and lost our balance, but our trusty rope and the aid of our friends saved us from being lost to the bog. I, I don't know if the rope in our inventory actually counted for this, but I sincerely hope it did. The insatiable bog gurgled hungrily after us, but we didn't look back. Sodden and weary, we finally made it to solid ground, and a palace of sorts rose before our eyes. A spacious hut made from mud like the rest, but decorated with pebbles, bones, cattail spikes, and snail shells. In front of the palace was a wide and shallow reservoir. Its green water reflected the leaves of huge ferns and primitive clay figurines. The buzzing of gnats was nearly deafening. We were not far from the center of the swamp. 
and a firm yet steady path led through the black thick bushes at its end that tall dry tree stretched mightily upwards clawing at the firmament knowledge world 17 we carefully examined the clay figurines trying to fathom who they might portray Goggle eyes, flat heads, with no necks, ears or chins, ugly long legs, unnaturally bent. These sculptures could only be the work of boggards. Primitive, cruel boggard tribes had inhabited the swamps of Garand and Avistan since the olden days. Pitiless others and each other, they were led by the darker instincts of their insane priest kings. They were known to grow young fry in the pools inside the houses. The buzzing of gnats, okay, we've already seen that. We peeked inside the hut. The palace was twice the height of the other huts, and its entrance was wide enough that three could walk abreast. The walls were decorated. An unknown builder had scratched drawings in the clay while it was still wet. The faded scrawl depicted huge amphibians devouring smaller figures, some frog-headed, others not. Three of the four rooms boasted large holes filled with water, just like the other dwellings, though there were steps descending into them, cut into the dirt. The furthest room we found equipment decorating the walls, leather armor, spears, clubs. To our surprise, a number of the items were well preserved. But it was clearly deserted, so we felt no shame in taking some of it with us. We moved forward, seeing as we'd drawn so close to our goal. It was ever so lovely to walk once again along the well-trodden path. Our soaked clothes imagined being dry, and our mood at once lifted. The bushes that bordered the path seemed to wave at us amiably, with their juicy green leaves and shiny bright red berries. A fresh wind puffed away the rotten smell, and it finally felt like the swamp might nearly be behind us. But then the wind stopped blowing and the thorny branches continued to move, and we heard a loud shout. Lindsay, who was watching our rear, pointed to a surging, crawling wall of green, filling the path in behind us. The surrounding thicket was coming to life. Its branches reached out with a soft, swishing noise. Drops of sap oozed from the thorns, gleaming in, their en in the emerald dusk. The path was disappearing. There was no way back, and the clear space ahead was closing. We ran forward as fast as our legs could carry us, flying towards the closing passage. As any experienced traveler could tell you, sometimes you walk and sometimes you run. The branches snatched at our backpacks and clothes, and the spreads tangled at our feet, but we slipped their grasp. We were too quick. Finally, after what seemed like an endless road, we came upon a gigantic dry tree that had so intrigued us from the beginning. Lo and behold, we saw an idol cut from its trunk, a huge horned three-eyed toad. Its googly eyes made it look both cruel and dumb, almost idiotic. The muzzle ha hung half open, sharp toothed with several hanging tongues. Deep brown streaks oozed from the corners of its mouth. Lore Religion 15. We tried to glean what sort of idol it might be. There could be no doubt. It was Gargunta, master of the Great Swamp in the Demon Abyss. But what is this? While we were examining the idol, a large bright blue dragonfly came out of a hollow in the tree and sat invitingly on the very tip of our noses. It was so remarkably strange, it didn't react to our movements and seemed quite content to remain where it sat. Gargunta is a demon lord of the fetid swamps and serves as the sole goddess of the swamp-dwelling boggards. Giganta appears as a frog with many heads and even more eyes, and tongues. Boggards portray her as a huge queen of their kinds. The idol reeked of evil, chaotic evil. Grab the dragonfly, held it in front of his mouth, and did he just decide to eat it? Let's pass on that. So let's, uh, let's break the idol. Clearly we could not leave such an obscenity unscathed. We drew our swords and slashed to the wooden face, and from it oozed black sticky blood. We heard a great clap of thunder, and a thick fog arose from nowhere. The birds screamed furiously. More thunder soon followed. With each strike, the sky, sky grew darker and darker. Soon we couldn't see the sun through the fog. The air shuddered again, but it, was it still thunder or the creaky voice of the monstrous toad? Still, our iron blades dug deep into the blood-soaked wood, and at last the idol was smashed into splinters. The fog cleared away and silence descended. Suddenly, we realized that every frog in the swamp had gone silent. We turned almost with a sigh of relief and saw that the flesh-eating bush had withered away. Satisfied with the job well done, we returned to where we'd come from. Huh, that was neat. Why is it evil to eat the bug? I don't know! 
I some of the alignment options in this are kind of confusing. I would like to I would like to choose more like chaotic neutral options, but they only give you a couple. And it's unfortunate. Hey, thank you ASF uh 13C for the 100 bits. Say hi and good night. Well, hi and good night. And wonder you're now cursed by the way. Check the curse. Yeah, I'll check that. Feeble body, permanent. All right, so we'll have to figure out how to get rid of a curse. Ouch. Mutilated body. Looks like it was eaten by some rodents. Well, she's exhausted, so let's actually start with the camp. If we can? Uh-oh. Maybe we can't curse. Or camp. But yeah, so we, we got cursed. I'll figure it out. Yeah, Jod can cure cure your curse. I'm pretty sure Jod can cure the curse, yeah. Okay, her trickery is... it's acceptable. It's bad. Okay, can we... Okay, we can camp up here. So let's go do that. Because, yeah, yep. Oh, hold on. Because, yeah, ex fatigue and exhaustion is going to make this a lot harder. Get her over there. He sells scrolls, but they're expensive. 450 oh, per scroll, and it only affects one person. I. Okay, so it'll cost me. It'll cost me like 3,000 gold to get rid of that, but whatever. Okay, so let's let's manage this. Who's good at cooking? Looks like Lindsay's good at cooking. So we could do hearty meal, which is savings throws. I guess. I actually don't know what the bonuses are. Let's do sweet pancakes. Oh, we don't have the, uh, we don't have the ingredients for some of these things. Or we have limited amounts. That's good to know. Okay, that should be fine. So I pick up my clothes this morning and see some pictures embroidered on it. Pine trees, clouds, an owl bear fighting a troll. Spill it out, who did that? I confess, it was I. I only meant to patch them up a bit and got a little carried away. Well, that was kind of cute. Okay. And we get a shepherd's pie. And we might get attacked while we sleep. We'll see how this goes. Okay, well, one way or another, we can move at full speed. Oh, and apparently, uh, that's kind of cheatsy. So I have the thing that makes it so uh, status effects go away uh, after rest. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to turn that on or, on or off. But apparently, curses are included. I I really wish that was just stuff like poison and whatnot. Um, okay. Shepherd's Pie is bonus on all savings throws for the day. So same thing as the hearty, hearty meal. Well, I guess I guess we just uh I guess we just slept off that curse. I don't know if I'm gonna change that option or not. Uh I really wish it was stuff like poison and like more temporary bonus uh bonuses. Negatives would actually uh would actually go away and stuff like curses would last. Because Pathfinder really likes permanent um permanent stat status effects. And I don't like them as much, you know, the... We got poisoned by the spiders, which is... Permanent? Until you cast Restoration, I'm like, eh... I don't really like that system. Curses, though? What's yeah, I, I'd, I'd there, be... I I'm down with that. That makes more sense. Anyway, that's kind of cheesy. Yeah, I... Uh, I'll have to think on whether or not I want to... Flip that op option back or not. On one hand, it saved me a lot of money.
it's, I mean, the fact that it saved me a lot of money is like, it's a little tempting to just keep it on, I don't know. Yeah, you do fix them after hours of rest normally, but not in this game, it's it's permanent until restoration. Hello. Uh-oh, where rats? Your life is low. Okay. So it looks like these guys are actually a little bit tougher. Oh, right. Of course, they're were rats. They've got, uh... They've got, uh... It's in Valerie up here. Let's hit that guy. We might have to camp after this one. Let's keep doing Bone Shaker. I don't think they resist, uh magic damage. And I could just keep casting Bone Shaker over and over and over again. Explosive. Alright, well, time to start just channeling positive energy. Yeah, once more for good measure. I really like that feature. It's real helpful. Ooh, these guys were loaded in goodies. Uh, magic kukris, magic leather armor, magic belt. Yeah, that was this was worth a bunch bunch of magic goodies. Oh, if you looked at the sleep UI, there's ability score uh, healing as an option. Oh. Oh, did they reduce the stats for them here? I can only do this fight at level five with buffs. Uh, I am running it at a. I'm running at an easier difficulty. I will totally admit that. I turned it down because the uh, the game kicks my ass seven ways to Tuesday at the very beginning, and I just like I got sick of it. So I figured I'd just play on an easier difficulty and just kind of have fun, instead of uh, forcing myself to play something that was going to just destroy me over and over again. If you have standard weapons, replace them with masterwork. I know. I'm aware. I have I have been playing D&D since second grade. Bombardier's vest. It looks like it's just um leather armor plus 1. Leather armor plus 2. Anything else? Keen Kukri, Kukri plus 1. Shock sword, short sword. Ooh, fancy. I don't know if I give that to anybody. I don't know if anybody would actually really benefit from that. I'm going to give this to Lindsay, even though it's not immediately helpful for her. But yeah, I I enjoy hard games, but I enjoy hard games when, like, it's a roguelike, and it's kind of balanced around being specifically difficult, and you know, every ru run is, is cyclical, and, you know, there's variation on what you do. I'm not so interested in, like, super hard stuff when it comes to CRPGs, for example, because, like, I want to beat this game sometime within the next, like, you know, month or two. And the idea of being stuck here forever is... less attractive. With the bug introduced in the last patch, people are finding enemies with over... 177,000 AC. Difficulty settings won't help with that. That's... That's unfortunate. Well, that went down quick. I assume a troll hound has every every property of a troll. Just a houndy. Neat. But yeah, honestly, with an enemy with uh, 17... Uh, 1,777,000 HP. Uh, or, yeah, whatever, anyway. Uh... That would be 177,000 HP. Anyway, or AC. Just use spells on them. Shouldn't have to worry about it too much, hopefully. Okay. Let's just go up and down the river. I kind of want to fill in the map. I should probably pay attention to... Uh, I should probably pay attention to that... 
uh, that time limit. I think we've got plenty of time. Is this a kind of online D&D? &D? Well, not online. I'm not playing it uh, with anybody else. But it is a computer uh, computer version of D&D. Spooky, prevail? scary, scale. Ah, shoot. Areem! Run intercept! No, Lindsay! Alright, well, this is why I've got the. I've got this sitting around. Oh, that was easy enough. I don't think the skeletons really have anything of any use. Unfortunately, it's all. Yeah, it's all just garbage. I already got two abiris in my uh, capital. Okay, it does sound like they've got some weird bugs. 